Eurosport, the home of cycling. Liège Baston Liège, or La Doyenne, was founded in 1892, making it the oldest of the five monuments. It's also the last important one day race of the spring before the major stage races of summer. And it's one of two Ardennes classics. The other is the midweek Flesh Wallon, which preceded it. In the past, these races have been held on consecutive days, with a prize for the best rider overall. The course's difficulty means that Liège Baston Liège is the first monument of the season that tempts potential Grand Tour contenders to the start line with a genuine hope of winning. The race used to do exactly what it says on the tin. It started in Liège and headed down to Bastogne, close to the border with Luxembourg, before travelling back to the city centre. In the early 1990s, the Tour de France organisers took over the race and the finish was moved to Arms, a suburb of Liège. They introduced the uphill finish we have today. But the character of the race has remained largely unaltered. The outward leg is lumpy more than hilly and the longest, steepest climbs are on the return journey. The hills are smooth rather than cobbled, but the difficulty of liege baston liege is not just the rate at which the hills come in the second half of the race, there are eight of them in the space of 90 kilometres, not counting the rise up to the finish, but also the fact that the lanes are narrow, making it very important to be in the right place at all the key times. The climbs come thick and fast, and they really start to bite. The most famous of them is the Côte de la Redoute, which rises above Remouchon. It's very steep and usually covered in graffiti supporting the local rider, Philippe Gilbert. For 2016, the course has been tweaked a bit, with the Côte de Stocco being removed. The Stocco is the climb that has a statue of record five-time winner Eddie Merckx at the top. A new climb, the Rue Nanio, has been inserted into the run-in, three kilometres from the finish in Arms. And the hope is that this will shake up the closing stages a bit and deter riders from waiting for the sprint finish. We asked a rider who made his debut in the 2015 Liège Baston Liège to sum up the race. My name is Larry Warbass. I am cycling. I mean, that's that's a hard thing to do. It's uh, of the hilly classics. It's definitely the biggest and the most prestigious, and also the longest. And I think that makes it at the end the hardest and uh you know it's it's kind of an interesting race because it doesn't really start till after 160 kilometers and uh so the time before that is just i guess all the build up to the most important points where the where the race really starts and that I can't remember what the name of the climb is called but I'm I'm pretty sure it's after 160k and that's when you start like the succession of climbs all in a row um, this year, I know it's changed a bit, so I don't know exactly how that's going to affect the race. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's interesting, uh, quite the build-up. And then after that, it's just once, if, once you're in position, it's just who has the legs. And uh, every, every hill after that, it's, it's just an elimination race from behind. I think uh, 160K is still a really long way. You know, some races we do aren't even 160k so yeah it's all about for the leaders uh saving energy you know uh trying to come into that last portion of the race the most important part as fresh as you can and that's not only with fresh legs but also a fresh mind and i think that's staying out of trouble uh staying relaxed staying calm and staying focused uh so you can keep your mind fresh for the fight to come Generally speaking then, it's not a race for the inexperienced. It can take a few years to learn the nuances of the course and crack the importance of being in the correct position before all of the climbs. Definitely, it didn't go all the way uh, Liège, best on back to Liège though, I didn't quite make it that far, but um, yeah, my first year professional back in 2005, um, I raced Liège, I think I only made it to the second feed zone. Um, but uh, yeah, I just remember just being uh, pretty overwhelmed by how hard the race was and, and the length and, and the level of, of, the, of the racing there was just so much higher than I've ever done in the past. This is 2014 winner Simon Gerrans talking to Richard Moore about riding Liège for the first time. 
But what's his outstanding memory of the year he won the race? Oh, what uh, stands out for me about my win in Liège is just how well our team worked together. Um, yeah, we sort of, everyone had a role in the day, everyone was really united and, um, and we really followed the plan and not only that, everyone sort of did uh, a little bit above and beyond what was expected of them and, and that resulted in, in giving me the best chance possible to win. So yeah, the real standout memory is how well the team worked that day. What's the trick to, to riding Liege Bastogne? Because it's obviously a brutally hard race, but what, what's the trick that you, you're certainly an experienced rider, what have you learned over the years? I'm not sure if there's any one particular trick and I think uh, it was that simple. Uh, we would have uh, many more uh, guys who'd won it more than once. I think uh, of the current group of riders, I think probably only Valverde's won it uh, on more than one occasion. So yeah, it's a difficult race. There's a, it's a definitely a race of attrition and a lot can happen over, over the duration. But um, yeah, it's hard to pinpoint one particular thing that makes it, uh, that you know, is the key to winning it. Valverde will be aiming for his fourth victory in 2016 and that would put him level with Italy's Moreno Argentine in second place behind Merckx in the all-time list of winners. As you'd expect, the Belgians have dominated the race with 59 wins from 101 races so far. But there's a strong Italian connection in this French-speaking part of Belgium too. And that's largely because of the Italian immigrants who came over in the first half of the 20th century to work in the mines. It means that an Italian winner is always popular. Perhaps the most celebrated edition of the race was in 1980, when a snowstorm froze the peloton and only 21 riders reached the finish. Bernardino won by almost nine and a half minutes that day, although it took him a couple of weeks before he could bend his fingers properly again. It is difficult to look at the list of winners and not see controversy though. Perhaps it's more obvious than with any of the other monuments because the role of honour is littered with riders who have tested positive or served bans for doping. There's also a question mark over Alexandra Vinokurov's victory in 2010. It's alleged that he bought the race win from breakaway companion Alexandra Kolobnev for €100,000, although the case is yet to reach court. Of all the spring monuments, Liège Baston Liège is the climbers classic and so it's the perfect gateway to the next phase of the season. Listen to the full episode of the Cycling Podcast every week. Available on iTunes and at thecyclingpodcast.com.